Hey everyone, I know it's been a while since I posted a Grim Dawn video on this channel, or any video for that matter, and um, the release of Devotion hasn't happened yet, so Grim Dawn's been kind of slow, and I just haven't been able to get to recording other games because of this other project I'm working on, and that is, let me grab it here, um, I did a printout today, it's a novel, because I decided to participate in NaNoWriMo, or National Novel Writing Month. So I decided to devote a lot of my time to that, and it really has taken up a lot of time, and I haven't been able to get to really recording a lot, unfortunately. And a combination of my batteries being drained for recording, and Grim Dawn being slow, and that um, has just led me to, to not post a lot over the last couple weeks. But with the Grim Misadventures that happened, that was released today, Grim Misadventures 85, I think it was, they showed off stats for legendary items, and I decided to share them here. So first off, we have the Bane of the Winter King, Sacred Blade, Sa Blah. Sacred Blade of King Hrothnar, ruler of the Northern Reaches, and son of the Great White Wolf. It's a legendary two-handed sword, and the artwork is right there. You can see that it deal it gives you a whole lot of cold damage and a whole lot of frostburn damage, percent health, which is pretty nice actually for a weapon. Attack speed, and plus one to all Nightblade and Shaman skills, in addition to giving a good bit of pet bonuses. Um, and then it has the granted skill, Heart of the Winter King. The Winter King was a savage, yet just ruler, who fiercely defended his homeland besides his, homeland besides his loyal white wolf, whom he called Father. The spirit of the great king still dwells within this mighty blade. Um, I think that might have to be beside... But anyways, um, it's a it's a self buff that you pop it. Um, you deal some cold damage. There's a percent chance of a lot of cold damage. You increase your armor and cold res and reduce fuse duration. And your pets deal. Your pets basically get the same same bonus, but popping on them. So it's an interesting ability, but it's weird that it's it's a cold weapon for Nightblade Shaman. I understand it. it. It makes total sense to me. Um, but all the cold abilities in Nightblade seem to be two-handers. Well, no, I guess this would work great for Lethal Gambit and Ring of Steel. While giving your Briar Thorn and your Blade Spirit a lot of abilities. So it's a little, it's a little on a weird bridging right there. And I'm sure a build would work for it. I'm sure there's a build out there because there's a lot of builds for everything in, in the game. So yeah, I'm sure there's totally a build for it, but it's one of those, like, I'd, I'd have to try it out, and I think you'd maybe have to build around it? <laughs> um, I mean, it's a really great two-hander, don't get me wrong. I'm totally not knocking it. Um, but I think it's a little on the, we'd have to build around it to see how good it could really be. Now this, this, one, <laughs> this item is stupid. Uh, but... <laughs> Blood Orb of Chithan. Fanatical Kabbalists swear the, that a drop of their primordial god's blood is contained within this orb. So it's, on its surface, it's oh, just a really great offhander. That's it right there. Because um, it gives you a, a huge chunk of chaos and vitality damage. It's got, you know, everything else in the right spots, like energy regen, casting speed, a resistance, cooldown reduction, plus on the bloody pox, plus on the all cultist skills. But it grants this ability. Blood right. The dark blood of Chathan corrupts all that it touches, even the arcane. So, um, it doesn't say you have to toggle this ability to maintain it, but it reads like a toggled ability. So, um, you know, 50... Yeah, so you would toggle it on and get this. 100% elemental damage converted to chaos damage. Now, when I read that, I was like, oh, it's a conversion thing. But I didn't notice it was a toggled ability. Oh, it's health cost per second. Okay, I read that as energy cost. But 50 active energy, health cost per second, that's easily dealt with. In all honesty, 50 health regen is not difficult to get. Like, it doesn't even matter what class you're going to. You could build for health regen and completely negate that. To convert 100% elemental damage to chaos damage. Let that sink in for a moment. 100% elemental damage converted to chaos damage. Let's say you're an Albrecht's Aether Ray Warlock with Tainted Power. You convert all that fire damage to chaos damage. 
Then run it through all your percent chaos damage. Yeah. Yeah. This thing is going to be insane for any build that combines together like fire with chaos. Demolitionists with occultist pyromancers. Totally for them. Totally. Imagine fire strikes that are dealing chaos damage. <laughs> Imagine like a shaman with those tornadoes. Or the totems that deal elemental that deal lightning damage. You converted all the chaos damage. You have chaos totems now. This this weapon is gonna be crazy. Or this offhand is gonna be crazy. I kinda love it. And I can see a whole lot of build potential for it for building chaos damage with elemental damage. It's utterly awesome. In fact, that's that's so awesome, I actually think it might need to be tweaked a little. Just to tone it down a bit. So, Grim Fate, it's right there. Um, a legendary one-hander. Uh, percent chaos and fire and burn, and you convert physical to burn. Skill cooldown reduction. Plus one to brimstone destruction, and plus one to all skills and demolitionist. Grim Fate, 25% chance on enemy death. Turn your foe's remains into a gruesome explosion of carnage and toxins. So, you kill a thing, there's a 25% chance that it explodes, and that's awesome. Like, I love Corpse Explosion from Diablo 2, it's one of my favorite Necromancer abilities, and that's basically this. So, the weapon in and of itself would be great for a Fire Striker, because I think Brimstone is like the third or fourth Fire Strike ability, right? If I'm recalling correctly. And then Destruction is the Sigil's second ability. So, like, those two abilities are just great together. I mean, there's great abilities on their own, too. But Grim Fate, the actual ability, 25% chance on enemy death, 25% chance is pretty huge. And I mean, I haven't seen any death effects really, so I don't actually know what the proc, proc rate's going to be on that. But man, just this weapon, I mean, it's going to be awesome to do this ability. Because you just explode it and it's fire damage and chaos damage. And actually, um, combine it with this sucker. Yeah, all of a sudden... You're dealing a lot more chaos damage. <laughs> oh man. I think these two weapons would actually go really great together for that particular build. But that's just me. Well, weapon and offhand. So yeah, another really, really solid, fun, legendary. Gut Ripper. That's that. Legendary two-hander. It deals bleed damage and pierce damage. Um, has some life drain. Plus three to fighting form. Plus three to deadly momentum. And it has the ability Gut Ripper. 10% chance on, or 100% chance on crit. The Gut Ripper has earned its name for leaving targets bleeding out, even if the initial shots are not lethal in itself. So whenever you crit, you deal a ridiculous amount of bleed damage. And I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking, you know, that's that looks like a gun to me. <laughs> that's the stock, that's the trigger, and that's, you know, a blade on it. But I'm, I'm wondering if that's an actual two-handed gun, or if it's a two-handed, like, axe that looks like a gun. And I think either way is really awesome. But also it says plus three to deadly momentum. And I don't actually remember if, if, uh, oh yeah, that's Cadence. I was thinking it was Blitz. Never mind. Yeah, that's actually going to be really awesome for a Cadence gunner. So, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really actually stoked for this because I have that bleed character, that bleeding blade master. And I'm like, he could easily switch to a gunner <laughs> and it would be really awesome to be, like, guns aren't amazing, but I actually think this would be a really cool a really cool thing to build around at 75. Just to have this, this two-handed gun, and you're cadencing with it with this giant giant build-up to deadly momentum. And dealing a crap ton of bleed damage with it. So yeah, I, I actually really like the way this weapon looks. The only problem is, as I mentioned before, it's a two-handed gun. So it's like, two-handed guns are sort of low on the totem pole for uh, for outright power. But still, it's... Tell me that. Okay, uh, but still, it's a it's a really just solid all around weapon. <laughs> okay, so mind warp. Um, I'm sure anyone who's seen this and who is a fan of the channel is like, I wonder what James thinks of this one. So mind warp is a, it's a it's a sword. Um, it's basically a a straight upgrade to that aether axe. I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> it's been that long since I've actually been in Grim Dawn, but um. Yeah, the big things for me here are the casting speed and skill cooldown reduction on a weapon. Plus one to all arcana skills is available in weapons all over the place. But it's really the casting speed, offensive ability, skill cooldown reduction combination that really makes it it stand out to me. So um, the thing here is, I think this is really built for something that's using Kalidor's Tempest. 
something that's sort of a, a melee mage built around Aether, and not really for the Aether Ray character. However, I'm looking at Mind Warp here, and it says 15 second duration, you get 50% Aether damage, and 100% physical damage converted to Aether damage. Now, to me, there's no cooldown on this, so it sounds like it's something you would you would want to keep like tapping every 15 seconds or so to keep this physical damage converted to Aether damage buff up, in addition to the 50% Aether damage. Now, I think it might be a typo that there's no cooldown on this, um, but to me... Mind Warp seems like one of those things where if you're playing with like a Cadence build and you want all that physical damage turned into Aether damage, this is where you would get it. So you would Mind Warp, Blitz in, start whipping whipping your sword around with Cadence to deal the Aether damage, and maybe use Kalidor's Tempest in its Wrath of Aggravex mode to just burst. Um, or if you're a sorcerer like my character, my main character, and he has access to things like the bombs and demolitionist or to the mortar trap 100 percent physical conversion applies to those as well so you could take the mortar trap and turn it into an aether fire mortar instead of just a physical fire mortar which is actually kind of big in my opinion because that means if you have to run around and you're fighting a boss or something and you have to reposition you can throw out your your mortar trap the mortar trap's pounding the boss away and then you can turn around and aether aether beam them or you could use it to just clear out trash mobs so it's an interesting it's an interesting weapon, and um, we'll have to see if that's the finalized ability there. Now, granted, the ability is not this. So I would almost say if the, if blood rights an ability, then mind warp should be like that type of ability as well. But that's just me. I might be asking for too much there. Anyways, um, <clears throat> last legendary they showed is Skyreach Bulwark. It deals fire and lightning damage. It's got defensive ability, fire retaliation, plus one to all skills and demolition since shaman. And it has a chain lightning ability, 30% chance on block. Immense electrical force emanates from you, cascading to additional enemies. Affects up to five targets, and it deals a chunk of lightning damage. And this would be great for elementalists who are a little tanky or want to be a little tankier. Because this is all DPS stats here, in addition to giving you defensive ability. Plus one to all skills, essentially, between your two classes. Um, retaliation is actually kind of nice to have, in all honesty. Especially if you're if you're tanking, just returning that damage. And the, the Demolitionist can actually do a lot of retaliation damage. I mean, actually, I think the, the Shaman can, too. With, um... I think they get it in... Um, their aura might actually have it. So... Yeah, and then having this as retaliation as well, technically. Because 30% chance on block is actually quite common. 30% chance is really high for a, a proc. And I think that actually would be a really nice a really nice shield for someone who's playing a more defensive elementalist. So, the final image they showed was this image. And they said it's a armor set of some kind. And I'm thinking it's for the shaman. Possibly a shaman arcanist. A druid combo or a conjurer combo or maybe even a trickster combo it looks like it would fit with all all three of those with all the the brambo coming off it and the horns and the glowy green sword um very very shamany but the spellcaster bit on there makes me think it's going to be conjurer or um druid so that was all of the legendaries they showed off today and hopefully Devotion comes out this week because it'd be a really great Thanksgiving gift. Um, and November's, like, next week November's over. So uh, hopefully that'll happen tomorrow or, like, next Wednesday or even Thursday. I'll take Thursday. So um, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, remember, on Thursday, Cavo and I are going to be playing games. Uh, and we're opening it up to play with you guys who maybe don't have people to play with on Thanksgiving. So if you're interested, you can check out the video um, on the channel uh, that announces that and I will have the times that we're playing whatever games are playing and the actual games are playing like the the whens and the whens and the whats for the times and games on my Twitter account it'll be twitter.com slash wolf overclocked and I'll, I'll I'll have a link to the video if I remember to put it in um, in the comments below so thanks for watching again and I will see you guys next time